Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of topic six in our database class. In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to concurrency control. And begin by talking about concurrency. And when something is, when, when two things are happening concurrently, it means that they're happening at the same time. And so when we talk about concurrency in the context of a database processing environment, what we're talking about here is more than one user who's trying to access, use, change, update, delete the same data in the database at the same time. And you can imagine if you just take a moment to reflect on that, that if you have a database that has hundreds or thousands or millions of users who are simultaneously working with it, the actions of one of those users may impact others, right? If you and I are trying to work with the same information at the same time and you're trying to change it and I'm simultaneously trying to change it, what each of us is doing can affect what the other person is doing. So this becomes an increasingly sticky problem as the number of concurrent users increases. And uh, this is why all of these enterprise level database management systems have extensive concurrency controls in there so that we can actually benefit from having a multi-user database environment. All this database technology is great, but what makes it really powerful and useful to modern organizations is that we can have many people use the same database, right? We keep all of the information in one centralized location. And that way, everyone who's using it always has the most up-to-date version of the data. It's great in theory, but uh, technically it's challenging to ensure that the actions of one user are not adversely impacting the actions of other users. Okay. So this speaks to this notion of interdependency, and that is that uh, we do not operate as users in isolation. If we're in an organization of any reasonable size, then it's likely that other employees, other people, other users are going to be touching or working with the same data that we're working with at the same time that we need to work with those data. Okay. So these concurrency control mechanisms then are in place to ensure that what I'm doing in the database does not adversely impact what you're doing in the database and vice versa. And of course, we scale that out to not just you and me, but to all of the people who might be using the database at the same time. Okay. Now, one of the interesting concepts related to concurrency control is uh, this notion of accessibility, right? So on the one hand, on one end of the spectrum, we could say, all right, if somebody is using some data in the database, we could just completely lock down those data and no one else could use it, touch it, read it, look at it until the first person has finished. Okay, so that's one extreme along this spectrum of accessibility. So in that case, the data are not very accessible because we've constrained them to be used by only one person at a time. So others who may need to use those data to do their work at that moment are unable to do it. They just have to be put in the waiting room and they just sit there until the first person has finished using the data. So in that case, the data are not very accessible. However, then we have the opposite end of that spectrum. And on the opposite end of that spectrum, we do not lock the data. And we say that, hey, even if somebody else is, is currently working with these data, they can be used by another user. And in that case, we have maximum accessibility because as many users as want to use those data at a specific point in time are allowed to, but this comes with the cost of potentially causing these issues of one user's actions adversely impacting the actions of another user. So I don't know, it's an interesting challenge. We have these two ends of the spectrum and usually what we're going to want to do is try to find some balance in between so that we have a reasonable level of accessibility while simultaneously ensuring that the actions of one user are not going to adversely impact another user's actions. Right? We want to do that in a way also where the quality of the service is reasonable. Right? We don't want to have to wait for very long for our tasks or requests to be processed. Okay. 
So I have to find some kind of reasonable balance between these two extremes, a reasonable amount of accessibility while also providing a reasonable level of protection for our data.